All right, I'm gonna show you how to make a bucket worm for your cake still. Small, efficient. Uh, me personally, I like wor a worm better than a live egg. Live eggs are great, but man, you gotta use a lot of ice to keep a live egg cool. Whereas with a worm, you got more copper, more piping, takes less water, just tap water is plenty to cool it with. You use less water. So I'm gonna show you how I make my bucket worm. We need a five gallon bucket, some five eighths outer diameter soft coil copper. And the reason we want soft coil is so we can manipulate it real easily without, without kinking in it. So we want 10 feet of that. So with 10 feet, five eighths outer diameter copper, soft coil. We need two right angle 90 degrees, half inch elbows, piece of half inch copper. Um, I use these fittings for my water in, water out, just because a uh, hose screws right in here. Makes it simple. You could always jam some tube through and silicone it up if that's what you wanna do. So I'll let you know what these are. And then I got some things to secure the coil to the bucket. I'll show you how these come into play. So come along. Five eighths, outer diameter. I got 20 foot, but we're only gonna use 10 feet of this. Here's the fittings. You can see it's got rubber seals. We'll put it in there, screw it tight, it won't leak. And then your hose will screw right into that end. So that's what these are. Three quarter inch. And then these are for fixing our worm to the bucket. And we got our five gallon bucket. So for starters, we're gonna drill some holes and put these in. All right, so I lied. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this copper so it fits in here. And so we just want it smaller. So we're just gonna start here and work our way around, getting it all the same size. So once we got it all the same size, and we only do a little bit at a time because we don't want to kink this. So once we got it all smaller, then we'll just keep checking. So I get the size I want and then just work it around. Almost, we got a little ways to go. So we're just gonna keep working this around a little bit at a time. Until she's all the same size. Now she's the size we want her. She fits inside. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull it apart. Try to keep it even. We want it to run all the way from the top of that bucket to the bottom. But you want to make sure you keep your slope because you want it to run down. So we're just trying to keep our slope. Let me just check. You see we're getting close. And when you're working with this soft coil, it's just a little bit at a time. You do a bunch and you're going to kink it. And if you kink it, and you have to cut it out and start again. There you see. And try it if it gets a little smaller at the bottom. As you can see, I'd say that's perfect. Where we want, we got it. Just a little bit up top here. Yeah. If you notice, I took my bottom and I bent it in a little bit more. That's because I'm going to toss the elbow on this. And a pipe straight like that. 
See how it come out the bottom on the side. So you see. So it'll sit in there like that. Come out the bottom. And that's all there is to wrapping a worm. So now you could flare this end if you wanted and just insert that in there. I ain't gonna do that. Cause I don't have a flaring tool here. So I'm just gonna solder this on here. I think that'll work just perfect like that. Now, we're going to drill our holes after. So, I'm going to solder that on there, and I'm going to put one on the top. And that's just to tie into however they want. So... Time to get the drill and drill some holes. So we're gonna have one in the bottom. That'll be our water in. And one in the top. That'll be our water out. Cold in the bottom, hot out the top. I cut out my holes. Um, I had to make a little modification to the bucket because this nut wouldn't fit flush in here, so I just took the Dremel and cut this out. Now, you could just move it down here below here, but I feel like you're robbing a lot of cooling, so I'm just going to cut this out every time and move it right up there. So, I'm just going to make sure our rubber seal is on the inside. Put plastic seal on the outside. Now we'll just put this on. It's reverse threaded, so the only thing to reverse threaded. So we'll do one, and then we'll do the bottom one. Like I said, your hose screws right in here. You have to get two male ends, but you screw them right in here. No problem. All right, so now we got these in for our water. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the front of this for the front of our worm to come out. take and drill four holes to use these pieces to hold our worm from bouncing around. We're just going to drill four small holes. So after we got our little four little holes drilled, Take our worm, as you can see, we got our pieces soldered on. And we're just gonna fish it through the hole in there. So as you can see, it just bounces around in here. That's where these are gonna come into play. So I'm just gonna wrap these through here. Like so. I'm gonna position this where I want it. I'm not gonna tighten it yet. But you gotta get the idea what's going on here. All 
All right, as you can see, that's a lot more stable. And we're just doing a couple little, putting these little pieces on and stabilizing it. So now, you know, you can manipulate this however you want it, make it smaller, point where you want. I set it up like this, so whoever can run an elbow out, straight down, throw a union on, do whatever you want. So now the last thing to do is we're gonna silicone this shut because I don't have anything to around that. So I just got some all-purpose silicone. I'm gonna put a real small layer on tonight. And then I'm gonna come back tomorrow in the morning, hit it up again. So we'll come back for that. So I'm just gonna put me a little Little base layer. If you want to get inside and do it, you can. I can't get my big ass hands in there, so this is what's gonna work. This is what's worked for me in the past. So it don't matter how it looks the first time. Because I take my finger, push it down in there, make sure I get it in that hole and that crack. Real good. All right, as you can see, real thin, real small layer. I'm gonna let that sit overnight and dry. So I'll come back to you in the morning when I'm ready to put another coat on. It's the next morning. You can see it's hardened, separated a little bit. So now we're just gonna hit it up with another bead around it. I'm gonna try to make this one a little prettier. And just like last time, we're gonna take our finger, but we're not gonna press down so hard. We're gonna leave a bigger bead on there. Now we're just gonna let that dry. And that's all there is to making a bucket worm. That's all there is to making a cake still bucket worm. So real simple, uh, maybe a little tedious. It does take some work, time to acquire the parts. So if you wanna make you just an efficient worm, bucket worm for your still, your cake still, this is the way to go. So good luck. Or if you don't wanna waste the time building one, you can just buy one from us. Get them on our website, ship to your door, fiddlymoonshine.com. Shine on.